Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Covered, I'm Penge, and welcome back to Project Hospital, where last time we muddled our way through a couple of events. We did an epidemic event, and then we did a natural disaster event. But now to move things on even more with the quick snap care insurance people, who seem to be completely obsessed with events, we have to complete an accident event. But if we do that, they're going to send five people via flashy lights Nino machines every single day to us, which would be huge. That would be a lot of money coming into the hospital, with those five flashy lights Nino machine patients. So we do want to get that done. However, right now it's currently 1.41 in the afternoon. So I think what we'll do is we'll wait until tomorrow morning when the day shifter in for a brand new day before we kick off the accident event. If we do it now, it'll spill over into the night shift and there's less people working on the night shift and it might make it a bit more trickier to get things sorted. So I think we'll wait. Now let's get time ticking on a little bit. We do have quite a lot of money. We've got 100 and $42,106, which is wonderful. And I was thinking, is it worth doing a little bit of expansion down here in emergency? Because last time we saw the observation room just here isn't really big enough anymore. It's not really kind of working. And neither is Peter Miller. Peter Miller isn't working properly either. Peter Miller, are you okay? Are you okay, Peter Miller? Oh dear, you've got a bit of an infectious disease going on, either dengue fever or Zika fever. Okay, I'm sure they'll sort you out, Peter Miller. It's all okay. But yeah, we had to kind of very hastily throw a bed into here last time, just there. And it looks a bit silly. It's kind of in the wrong place. It looks all kind of awkward. So I think maybe we expand this room out a little bit. The only thing is, I'd like to move that bed there. And there's currently somebody in that bed. How long are you going to be in that bed, Margaret Williams? You've got babesiosis. Okay, I don't even know what that is. A parasitic disease caused by the parasite Babesia or Babesia. I don't know how you say that. It is comparable to malaria. Ah, thank you. Okay, right. That helps out quite a bit. It's spread through ticks and often, often presents with Lyme disease. Okay, so are you being treated? Are you being treated for any of this kind of stuff? Don't worry, we'll step in. We've done doctoring recently. We'll step in and help out with this. Uh, a couple of hidden symptoms. Do you know what? Do all of the stuff do all of the things, and then maybe, actually, if we do manage to get her treated, maybe she can leave and then go home. Hang on, hang on. Are you taking her out of this bed? Oh, no, you're taking that person out of that bed. Botherations. Okay, never mind. Yeah, if we could move that bed, that would be ideal. And then we can expand over into here, because that was the original plan. I think observation was going to be all of that space there. And then it was never really used that much. But now I think yeah, it does need to get a little bit bigger as we get more people coming into the hospital. Maybe more observations are required. So I think, yes, that's what we're going to do. Do you know what we could do? Whilst that bed is still there, it's a bit of a nuisance, but yeah, we'll move it eventually. Maybe let's get all of that set up, shall we? Now, was the actual plan to have all of that as observation? Was that what we were going to do? Is it kind of zoned out as anything? No, it's not. It's not zoned out as anything at all. I mean, is the trauma center big enough? Is that big enough? Or do we need a little mini trauma center along here, possibly? Because I was thinking we could, there's six beds in there. And it's okay right now, there's only two people in there, but at some point we're going to get more than, say, 100 people coming in. We're going to get more than that, and that might make this quite busy, particularly if we get five people coming in every day via the flashy lights and Eno machines, that might be quite busy. So do we want to get another little trauma centre across there, possibly? I was thinking kind of on the end there. The only bad thing about that is it going to have to sort of push people through here? You know, really injured people coming in via a flashy lights Nino machine, coming through here, then go into a corridor, and then go along the corridor a bit. And that's going to slow things down. I like this approach here. I like having the doors straight into a room where they can get treated. I like that idea. I kind of think, you know, having them walk all the way through there is a little bit naff, isn't it? Right, hang on. Could we do that? So a trauma centre. Could we have a secondary trauma centre? Let's just kind of plan this out, possibly. So six by ten, that would be OK. That would get us probably one, two, three more beds in. So we could treat nine people in trauma centres at any one time. That might be OK. That might be OK. And then we make the rest of that an observation room. And it can all be one big observation room. There's no point in doing it. So it's slightly. Oh, OK. Patient does not have functional room. Oh, no, hang on. No, no, no. This is fine. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't worry, game. Don't worry, game. I'm on it. We're going to remove the wall. It's going to be fine. Don't you worry. It's going to be a completely valid room in a second. Do not fret, game. Um, hang on. Do you know what? To make the game happy, 
because otherwise I might forget. Let's take that wall down. There you go, game. Look, everything is fine. It's all good. It's all okay. Right, are you are you all fine? Like are you there? Are you are you okay? Can we click on you? Yes, you're hospitalized, idle in bed. Everything is all fine. Okay, right, good. So we've made that a little bit bigger. We've opened it up a little bit. I mean, yeah, ideally, we need to move that bed there and possibly even that one as well because that's going to be in a little bit of a weird place too. Put them around the elevator just there. But okay, so go back into here. So yeah, is that big enough? Is that really big enough? Could we fit? It's going to be three, isn't it? It's going to be three more things over there. It's probably not a bad thing. It's not as easy to access as I would like, but I think it will do the job. If we put doors there and doors there, that might allow people to move through it relatively quickly. I think that's what we do. I think that's what we do. So observation we can get, move that bed there and that bed there. So probably get another, what, one, two, three, four beds in possibly, which might be worth doing. So I think that'll be quite good. I think maybe as well. We could push them a bit closer together. There's a bit of a gap. Oh no, there's not a gap. There's not a gap because of the thingy machine on the wall there. The life-saving machine that goes bing and bong and boop. That one there. Okay, right. No, we can't do that. Um, yeah, we could probably get another, what, three or four beds in there, which is probably worth doing. So hang on a minute. Let's try and sort this bit out over here. Although, yeah, we can't move any of these beds whatsoever because they're all occupied right now, which is a bit of a nuisance, let's be honest. See, I'd like to move that across to there. Maybe, do you know what we could do? If we could actually make it work around the elevator. So around here, we could have all of the kind of uh, instruments here. That could be quite useful. So have all of the things here. So where you wash your hands and all the equipment all around there. And then maybe just have a load of beds across that wall. That would make sense. Might to move the door ever so slightly down one, but that'd be okay. That wouldn't be too much of a bother. And then maybe have a couple of doors down here. I think that would be quite a good idea. Let's see if we can do that, shall we? Right, so hang on. Let's get the um, the double doors with oval windows with the blue line on, please, because that's what we've got elsewhere. So we'll have that just there. So another way into that room. Uh, and then let's get the floor done and the wall and all that kind of stuff. Hang on a second. So drip a drop of the floor, place that down. This is going to be fine. Okay, so not making too much of a dent into our money, which is lovely. And then we'll go to the walls and we shall grab whatever that is. And that can go to there and then like that. And then we can swivel it round and it can go across like that. And then across like that. And then across like that. Okay, so the wall is now done. So now, yeah, it's just a case of moving things about if we can if we can move things around. I mean, can we mark the beds as not available or something? Because I know now we can't pick them up and move them, which I do find, I would say that's my biggest gripe, if you like, about this game. And I love this game, it's brilliant, but that's my biggest kind of thing that I would say niggles me the most, in that once something is in use, you can't pick it up and move it. So that bed there, look, there's nobody in that bed at that point. Why couldn't we have picked it up and moved it over there, for example? It would have made a lot of sense to do so, but there we go. So now that person there is just in a bed with a great big load of empty space behind them, which is a little bit silly, but there we go. Never mind. Um, also, whilst we're here, whilst we're doing all this stuff, let's grab the walls of the trauma center and we'll get them set up on the inside and then we'll get the floor done as well because we might as well do that like so. Okay, so that's now ready to go. Apart from doors. Doors might help, Penge. That could be quite useful, couldn't it? Um, how about, we've got to have the big doors. We've got to have big doors like that. So you can sort of burst through them very excitingly and shout quickly, I need 19 milligrams of Fefloptopline, stat! And then shout at people because that's what they do in such things. That's what they do in these. I've seen it on television medical dramas. Right, so that's all sorted. I mean, do we spend some money on getting that in? I don't think we do. I think that room there becomes our main priority. So let's just watch and see what we can do here. Is anybody going to get up and clear off? There's nobody in that bed anymore. Is that because they're off doing exam things? Right. Everybody is still in a bed in that room, which is a little bit of a nuisance. Never mind. We've got until tomorrow morning. We've got until tomorrow morning before we before, yeah, we start doing other things and doing event stuff. So hopefully at some point 
one of these beds will be cleared out by the morning. And then we can move at least one of these. I mean, that one there is not so bad. That one there is not so bad. These two do look a little bit silly and that one looks very silly where it is. So we could do with moving them around if we could, but it's okay. Jessica Hill having a little bit of a collapse there. I'm sure she'll be okay. Right, any for you? Ah, right, that bed's free. Okay, pause time before somebody gets in that bed. Right, okay, here we go. Bed number one can be moved. That's not a bed. That's the, that's the sort of thing that goes on the wall. That's fine. We'll have that as well. So pop that there and then grab the bedside table to go there and then grab the life-saving machine to go just there. Okay, right. Already it looks a little bit better. It looks a little bit better. If we could move those three around a bit, that would be useful. So we've got one bed. In fact, hang on, hang on. Maybe we should line them up down here. Maybe we should line them up. Possibly the door should be here as well. Maybe the door should be here so the beds can kind of go there because the beds take up two squares, as do the doors. Hang on a minute. Those doors are in the wrong place. Away with you doors. Come back doors. Pop the doors there. Okay, so yeah, maybe we put the beds along here. Hang on. Can we do that? Does that work? Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. We'll do that, please. So yes, we'll have one of those and we'll have one of those. So put them there. Okay, right, so that bed is done. Now we just need to clear out potentially three more beds and then see what we can do. That bed there possibly could stay. That might be okay, but these two could do with moving out of the way. Uh, Jane Martin having a spot of a collapse. It's fine, Jane. We've got some very good people around here. They'll sort you out. It's all going to be okay. Yeah, if you two could just sort of clear off a bit, that would be useful. That would be grand. Oh, bro, you have cleared off, but not permanently. I think you've just nipped the loo. <laughs> I meant more on a sort of a long-term basis of clearing off. Right, are you clearing off? The doctor did go and see you. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you could vacate to another ward, because this is just observations, so maybe if they observe you enough and then you could go away somewhere else, that would be nice. Okay, never mind. Right, we're up to 162,471 money, which is a very silly amount of money. It's going to come down quite a bit in a moment as we pay the day shift. But even with that done, 115 grand. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Nope, nope, it's still fine. Right, that bed is free. That bed is free, but I think that bed's okay. That bed is not so bad. Unless we want to put all the medicals. I know the medical stuff can go there, look. All the medical stuff can go along that bit, I think. So it could sort of line up along here. So move it from here, put it over there and then possibly took, you know, a bin around the corner or something, or some over here, but I think that's what we do. So that bed can probably stay just there, unless we do move it out of the way and put it over here for now, just to try and fill that wall up a bit. Do you know what? Let's do that anyway, shall we? Right, grab, oh crikey, I'll grab the wall socket first. That's not intentional. Do that, do, hang on. Hang on, no, that can't go there. Oh no, I've grabbed the wrong thing. Hang on, there we go, like that. And then grab the thing on the wall. Okay, wonderful. So that's moved that over as well. So we've got a little bit more space down there now, which is okay. Right, move time on. Hang on, there's nobody, is anybody in that bed? Yes, okay, no, she still is around somewhere. There she is. Who are you two and what have you got? Um, oh, okay, you possibly, oh, you've got something terrible. You've got something terrible. Um. Okay, uh, it looks like we are trying to treat you as best we can. Have all of these things, please. Have those things to make you feel better. You can have all those things to make your symptoms better. Oh, you've got loads of potential issues. Okay, so they might be here for a while, which is a little bit unfortunate. We'll speed time on very quickly. Rachel Lopez having a spot of a collapse. It's fine, Rachel Lopez. Some very good people around. They'll sort you out. It's going to be good. Okay, Susan Hill having a collapse. This not great, is it? He's being wheeled away. Is he being wheeled away permanently? No, botherations. <laughs> Please vacate the beds. Please vacate the beds so other people can make use of them when we move them elsewhere. Because it looks a bit untidy right now. Is he still there? Yes, he's still there. Boo. Okay, never mind. Never mind. It'll come back in a second. I think we need to wait for the little kind of money thing to appear from them. Because that's what happened with the other person, wasn't it? Some money appeared above their head because they vacated, but okay, this is fine. We'll get to midnight and we'll pay out some money. That'll be okay, pay out a bit of money and we'll see what we've got left to play with for the overnight shift. Oh, hang on, hang on. Nope, still there, he's still there. <laughs> 
is still hanging around in the bed. Those two beds are full as well. Yeah, we need to move these round a bit. Right, so midnight rolls round. 115 grand left. That's huge. That's a lot of money. And in terms of today, patient intake, 105%. Insurance payment, 120%. That is excellent. Where's that person? They are still around. I'm surprised they're still around. Not quite sure where they're going to, but yeah, maybe when we get to eight o'clock in the morning, these two people will go away. Maybe they will leave because I know we haven't worked out what their diagnosis thing is yet. <laughs> we haven't quite figured out what's wrong with them. Could we maybe work on that? That would be good, wouldn't it? There's no other examinations left. They're just doing everything they can to figure out what's wrong with these two people. We might have to leave this room in a little bit of a sorry state. It's a little bit of a mess right now, but I think we might have to leave it as such um, because it's going to get to the morning and we want to go and do our accident event thing. So, yeah, we might be possibly a bit pushed to get these sorted, but we'll see what we can do. Do you know what? Run time on nice and quick. Maybe at some point overnight, we'll figure out what's wrong with them and they'll move to other departments. I don't know, but we'll keep an eye on them as time ticks by. Oh, I think that bed got vacated and somebody's already gone right back into it. Oh no, of all of the beds they could have gone into, <laughs> they've gone into that one there. The stupid bed, which has this kind of stuff now hanging off the ceiling. I kind of assumed that the life-saving machines that go bing and bong and boop were attached to the wall, but no, they must be attached to the ceiling. Oh, we must have missed that by seconds, because I did see the thing kind of coming up like a payment thing. And I thought, ah, that's quite good. And then I clicked up here to sort of stop it and checked, and already that bed was taken by somebody else. That is a bit of a nuisance because we could have moved one more of those beds over. Okay, what's wrong with you, Mark Young? Okay, you've got some sort of tick bite or tibola. Tick-borne, oh, what does that say? Tick-borne lymphadenopathy is a tick-borne ricketiosis, relatively common in Central Europe and caused by rickettsia slovaca, possibly. That might say, if he's got that. Um, yeah, have all those things, please. Hang on, that bed is empty. That is that bed empty on a permanent basis. No, it's still not. <laughs> James Green. You've got bronchitis, though. So maybe, now we know what the problem is, he might possibly leave. That could be good, couldn't it? That could be useful. If only we get a notification as to when that's actually happening. Um, No, nothing yet. Okay, we'll get through to 8 o'clock when the day shift starts. Jessica Cole collapsing. Oh, it's fine, Jessica. Barbara Brown getting a little bit impatient, but that's okay, Barbara. Barbara, very busy hospital. Very busy hospital. Lots going on. Right. Gets through to eight o'clock. 500 monies. 500 monies from that person. Can we move that over? Um, I think they're both empty. Are they both empty? No. That one isn't, but that one is. Do you know what? We'll take that. We'll take that and run with it. Thank you very much. Uh, so yeah, we'll put that there. Grab the little bedside table, put that there, and then grab the life-saving machine thingamabob and put that there. Yeah, we can't push them any closer together. I don't think, I don't think we can. Can we push them closer together? Potentially, yes. Although it does look a bit rubbish, but we might possibly fit another, another thing. But that machine, that machine there is attached to that bed. <laughs> So it, do, it looks a little bit naff, doesn't it? It looks a little bit rubbish. I think we'll, um, no, not the machine, the bedside table. We'll leave it like that, I think. We'll leave it like that for now. So there's you know, three across there. That's not so bad. And then, yeah, we can start, hang on. Now we can start moving these things around. Now we can start putting, say, that stuff over there, which is useful. So that's freeing up room on this wall to build some more beds and things. Uh, we'll pop that there. And we'll have the washy hands thing, sanitary equipment thing just there. For some reason it says 500 on it, but okay. Um, ah, right. Little bit of a problem in that we can't move that cabinet. And we can't, oh no, we can move that. That's okay. Um, I don't quite know where we can put this right now. We'll put that there for now, just to move it out of the way. Uh, and that cabinet is currently in use, which again is a bit of a nuisance, but never mind. Um, how about then? Can we move the defibrillator to over here somewhere? So can it go just there? Yes, it can. And now we can move those doors over a bit. And that means the doors are in the right place. So we can have beds lined up along that wall just there as well. Okay, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Right, away with you doors. 
and then hello doors like so wonderful and i think that'll do for now we can't move that out of the way which is a bit of a shame but never mind um hang on a minute hang on though that um that wheelchair does look a bit silly we'll put that in the corner for now do you know what can we put these sort of in the middle here possibly could we put them there we've got beds here so maybe it could go at the end of a bed, possibly. There's not really a good place for that to go. There's not really a perfect place, but just there will do for now, I think. Um, and then the plant at the minute can go just there. That will do. I think that's all we can do at this moment in time. But yeah, that's okay. It's better than it was. It's slightly more organised. It's still disorganised, but it's a bit less disorganised than it was. Okay, so it's just gone eight o'clock in the morning. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to get all the overnight money trickling in if we could. Speed time on a bit. If that gets more toward 140,000 of our monies, I think it might be worth paying off a little bit of our loan. It's kind of creeping toward, isn't it? There we go. 140,278 money. Let's get time on to nine o'clock, shall we? Come on. That seems like a good time to kick off an accident event. So nine o'clock, we've got 140 grand. So let's pay off another 20 grand of our bank loan. So just notch that down to 180 grand. Still quite a lot of money, but we're getting there. We're chipping away at it. And now I think with the day shift in and ready to do some fine work, let's kick off an accident event. Here we go. Let's see how we get on. Please be gentle with this game. Although we have done okay on the events. We've sort of, you know, we've bumbled our way through. So here we go. What do we have in store? A high-rise building has caught fire in a residential city district. Firefighters and police around the tower and are evacuating the residents. Your hospital should prepare for a high number of burn injuries. Okay, right. That's going to be mostly traumatology, isn't it? Okay, right. Take over all the patients. Who have we got? We've got... Uh, hang on. Where's the little summary thing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten people. Ten people. Uh, we did have a little... On previous events, there was a summary at the top that said, cure patients. But now we've just got a list of people. So Daniel Smith. Oh, right. No. Oh, okay. This is this is fine. This is okay. Um, right. Let's go through and just sort of, you know, blue light all these people. I say blue light. I mean code blue. That button there. The button that means they get seen really urgently. We'll have some of that, please. So, right. They're all now code blue. So let's get some people in and let's see what's happening. So plenty of burn victims are going to come in because everyone's been caught up in a fire. Nobody in right now. One of the flashy lights Nino machines has gone out. This seems a little bit harsh that already we're, what, about 30 seconds in and we've got our first person. Ah, they're a firefighter. We're going to have a few firefighters here. Okay, so Daniel Smith. Okay, so what's going on with you, Daniel Smith? Um, okay, I mean, some of these I think we can possibly eliminate. Struck by lightning. That's, that's not likely that's happened, given we know that he was just caught up in a fire in a building. Severe frostbite on hands. Again, probably not that. You've got severe arm pain, so have analgesics. Um, I mean, yeah, you've got... It looks like something wrong with your arm. You've got an arm issue. So how about a physical examination? That would help quite a bit, wouldn't it? And then can we do differential diagnosis? And then possibly an x-ray of your upper limb because if it is an arm, then we'll see if we can sort of figure out if it's broken or whatever. So, okay, you can have all those things and some analgesics to deal with the pain. So hopefully that'll be a bit lessened. We're getting people slowly coming in. Right, Paul Cole, a cashier. Okay, so you've either got frostbite or a burn. I mean, again, I'm thinking it's probably a burn, but okay, seven hidden symptoms. You can have some of that stuff right now to deal with the leg pain and the, what's that? Dead tissue in a full thickness wound. Eshar. That's very unpleasant sounding. Okay, physical examination and... Ah, okay, you can't do differential diagnosis. Okay, Regent Nat, can you do it? Yes, you can. Wonderful. Right, so do that, please. Um, and then that'll do for now. That'll do for now. So that'll sort you out for the moment. So, okay. Only two people. I think people are slowly arriving. But I mean, already we're a minute in. And only two people have got here. Um, Kate, a factory worker, another leg injury. You can have both of those things. And, oh no, a hidden symptom that's wibbly. Okay, emergency. We have to get this done. Regent Nat, differential diagnosis, and possibly 
x-rays of lower limbs and possibly even that fasting and maybe heart monitoring and then evaluation do all of the things everything do all of the stuff to kate to make sure she doesn't die here comes somebody else fire a flashy lights nino machine get time moving on a bit quicker please just to see if we can get all this kind of sorted everybody running around like crazy in there right you have a thermal burn of a leg jane adams this is okay we've worked that out um, you've got all these things here, so have all of that stuff, because you need all those treatments. Six hidden symptoms, but that's not wibbly. So we're not necessarily so bothered about this, but we will do evaluation and we'll do a physical examination as well, just to make sure you're okay. But thermal burn is traumatology. So would you like to go to traumatology and go to the burn unit? I think you're already in the burn unit. Burn unit hospitalization. Yeah, okay, right. So you can head straight over to there, please. Get all these treatments to make you feel a bit better. Mary Thomas. Mary Thomas is not part of the event, I don't think. Hang on, a quick check. No. Okay, so she's collapsing just anyway. I mean, that's, that's someone will get to you, Mary. It's okay. You are doing a bit of collapsing. Right. Lisa Garcia is part of our, part of our event. Um, a deep wound on her foot. Okay, so that's orthopedics and a wound closure. Okay, so wound closure and then all those other things as well. Hidden symptoms, but nothing's flashing on and off. We'll do that and that anyway. That makes sense. Okay, that's her hopefully going to be sorted. Nobody's... I know, Jane Adams is cured. Jane Adams is cured. Hooray. Right, firefighter, a severe thermal burn hidden symptoms at a wibbly, many other bad things as well. Okay, right, hang on a second. Uh, physical examination, that would make sense. Differential diagnosis, evaluation, heart monitoring. Uh, do all these things. Uh, oxygen saturation, probably check that as well. That might be important. And we need you to go to traumatology for burn management. So you go into there and you can have, yeah, burn unit hospitalization plus all of those things as well uh, an interview for the burn unit as well please and abdominal palpitation because why not eh that might help us find something out i don't know but it's worth a look i think right okay so have we seen most people two people are cured two people are apparently fine no not everybody's not even here yet these people are still arriving right jane barkley struck by lightning or a severe thermal burn i think we know which one it is <laughs> I think you might have a severe thermal burn, but okay, we'll do all this extra stuff anyway. Seems a little bit silly, but okie doke. Evaluation, differential diagnosis, and um, yep, you can have those two things for now. That'll sort of start you off. And then Susan Adams, again, unlikely to be frostbite, but have those two things there. And um, yep, physical exam, and where are we? We'll do that and that. And do you know what? We'll do an ECG as well, because why not, eh? We'll treat you. Right, Daniel Smith has a thermal burn of the arm, which means you need to go to traumatology, which is no great surprise, interview and evaluation over there, and all of those things, please, my good sir. So you're going to be okay. I think you'll muddle through. Uh, right, Paul Cole, thermal burn of the leg. Hidden symptom, not wibbly. Have all of these things here. I imagine you're going to go over to traumatology as well. It's going to get busy over there. Interview and evaluation just to make sure. Right, we are flying through these. It's looking pretty good. Three people have now been sorted. We've only got eight minutes left. And I still think Nancy Foster isn't even here. Linda White, you are not part of the event. They'll get to you in a bit, I'm sure. Um, okay, hang on. Linda, I kind of feel like we need to just ply you with all sorts of things just to make sure you actually are okay. Uh, do a physical exam on her as well, please. That'd be good. Um, what even is that? A respiratory disease caused by a fungus. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, okay. We'll leave that with you for now. We'll leave that with you. Right, William Robinson. Uh, oh, oh, you've got one of 17 possible diagnoses. Given again, you were caught in a fire. And maybe it's not a common cold or beef tapeworm. <laughs> that would be somewhat unexpected. And um, I have that. And then physical exam. And uh, let's go for... Hang on, where where is it again? Evaluation. Yes, please. And differential diagnosis. Because they can help out quite a bit. So we'll see what we can do with you. Right, Jane Adams. Thermal burn of the leg. Nothing in here. Oh, hang on. Those three things there. Okay, get treated for that, please. 
and hopefully you'll be okay. Four people have been treated. Okay, this is good. This is good. Seven minutes left, however. Right, Nancy Foster has finally arrived. Hello, you've got a leg wound and possibly something that might end up killing you a bit. Okay, physical examination. Oh, hang on, have those two things there. So physical exam, have that fast thing, because that's fast assessment with sonography in trauma. A special ultrasonography method used in the evaluation of trauma patients and intensive care unit patients. Sounds perfect for what we need. Evaluation, differential diagnosis. Um, Elisa Garcia, deep wound on foot, have those two things. Right, we are flying through this now. Jane has got a severe thermal burn. Who would have thought it, eh? Right, so have those two things. She's still got hidden symptoms that are wibbly. Okay, do all of these things because I don't know which ones to do. So there we go. In fact, somebody did say you can press. Which one was it? You can press a button or something. Is it that one? Open diagnosis table. Maybe we should look at that at some point. Um, ah, you've got carbon monoxide poisoning, which occurs from inhaling too much carbon monoxide. So I guess something in the fire gave off carbon monoxide. Three hidden symptoms. That's not good. Yeah, so what does that do then? Open diagnosis table. Oh no, what does that mean? <laughs> what does this mean? They might get malaise or tachycardias. Um, okay, I don't, ah, physical, a physical examination would, ECG might help with the irregular heartbeat. Oh, I see. Okay, so an ECG would help with that. That could be quite useful. Um, these are all potential symptoms of that particular diagnosis. Is that right? Do you know what? Do all of the things, do all of the things, and then maybe one of those will be helpful. I don't know. <laughs> Hang on, where do you need to go? You need to go to internal medicine. Go to internal medicine. I don't know what an EEG is. Um, oh, that needs a neuro exam unit. We haven't got that quite yet. We've not got those sorted, but you can have those things there. Okay, right. Move time on. Seven minutes, 15 seconds left. Can we do this? We've got about half the people done. Um, evaluation for you. You're okay. You're hospitalized. So I think now... It's just going to be time, you know, time will tell with you whether you're just going to get better. Uh, where are Daniel Smith? I think we've done everything we can for you, Daniel. So with you, we're going to return you to computer control. I don't think we need to look after you anymore. We've done everything we can for you. So you're okay. So you can go home at some point soon if you would like, if you feel okay. Susan Adams, you're not okay right now. Thermal burn of the arm have all of those treatments there and possibly pop over to traumatology because that will help you out quite a bit. And again, you've got nothing on here which means that you're in any kind of imminent peril of, you know, dying, which would be bad. So I think again, put you back onto computer control. I think you'll be okay with that. That'll be good. Oh, more people healing up. We've only got four people left. Nancy Foster at the bottom. Thermal burn of the leg. Have all those things. Over you go to the burn unit. It's a busy day in the burn unit at the minute. Um, I think you've got necrosis, which is flashing on and off. So we'll keep an eye on you. Um, Kate has got a thermal burn of the leg. Have all those things there. You've got necrosis as well, which sounds very grim. Burn unit over to you. Okay, but we'll keep an eye on them. Right, Pete Baker, severe thermal burn. Again, oh no, you've got necrosis. Right, hang on, that, that, and that. We'll keep an eye on these things here. Hypoxia, blood oxygen levels are dropping. Right, Jane's got tachycardia. Okay, have some antiarrhythmics, please. Right, let's try and keep these people alive. We've got five minutes, 54 seconds. Um, are you part of our, part of our people on the event? No, you are not. Um, oh but you have got a potentially viral kind of disease thing. Hang on, have all of that stuff. Highly contagious, highly contagious. Okay, what we do with you... Oh no, she's collapsing. Okay, can we move her really soon over to over to uh, the uh, infectious diseases? Because I don't want to have the hospital shut down again <laughs> because this person's collapsed in an in, in, you know, inappropriate place. Okay, here we go. We've got one, two, three people that need to get back. Two people now, this is wonderful. Right, Jane Adams, thermal burn of the leg. I think we can return you to computer control. I think you're okay. It's just Jane Barkley. William Robbins, oh no. 
Oh no, he's collapsed. Hidden symptoms. Okay, defibrillation on you. Oh, he's had heart failure. He's got two hidden symptoms, but we can't we can't do anything about it. We haven't got an EEG. We haven't got that, so we don't know what that is. Um, that is a bit of a problem, isn't it? A neuro exam unit. Is that in there? Is that in neurology? Oh, don't tell me we can't complete his thing. Um, hang on a minute. A neuro exam unit. Uh, yes, it's in there. I don't think it's in any other department. Um, hang on, have a quick look. That's cardiography. That has not got one. That's not got one. That doesn't have one. That definitely doesn't have one. Um, oh, oh dear. This could be a problem because he's got a hidden symptom and we can't figure out what it is because we haven't got ourselves um, that. We haven't got ourselves an electroencephalography, EEG. So we can't do that. Okay, we'll have to keep an eye on William and hope that he just... Oh, we've completed the event. <laughs> Even though William Robertson has collapsed and had heart failure and can't see anymore, apparently this is fine and we've been given 20,000 monies and a prestige boost. Okay, this is, this is very good. This is very good news. What I'm going to do is I'm going to return control of him <laughs> back to the computer. Right. Ambulance patients per day up to five. What's next? Um, successfully finish three events in a row. We've got to do some more events. Oh my word. Okay. Uh, but we've now done one epidemic event. And yet that, I think we've done an accident event before. We did an accident event as part, I think it was the random one that got thrown at us, which was the sort of the, yeah, the second or the first objective of quick snap care. I'm fairly sure we've completed an accident event before, but there we go. So I think now we just have to keep working our way through the events, which is okay. I don't mind doing that, but they can get very fiddly. They can get really fiddly. Do you know what? Return you to computer control. You're okay. You can go back to computer control. Uh, yep, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. No hidden symptoms there that are proving to be dangerous. And none over here. Okay, right. So all the people that were part of that event have now been returned to the computer to look after. And that's pretty good. Okay, right. So now we've got 180,000 monies. What can we do with that? Can we do a few little extra bits and bobs with our huge pile of money? Is there stuff that's not finished on this floor? I mean, that's looking okay. We could possibly get an extra bed in there. We could maybe fit an extra bed into here. That wouldn't go amiss, I don't think. There's space there for maybe a bed, maybe not a, um, a visitor thing. Unless we, hang on, what we could do is, here we go, we could change that door. So what if we just get another bed into here? So click that. We'll have a modern bed, please. So that's going to have to go, yeah, it's going to have to go there. So if we put the modern bed there, hang on, is that going to work though? Yeah, if we put the modern bed, and hang on, but there's plenty of beds in there. There's only two beds in use in here. Maybe that's not the best use of our money. Okay, no, don't do that. Bail on that idea. Forget that. Where else could do with a little bit of improvement? I mean, maybe. Is it worth putting some more machines in the blood lab over here? We've got space for it. We could possibly do that. So maybe get some more of these things. So get, I don't know, another hematology analyzer. So there's three in there. Um, and then get, what are these other things? Hang on, what's that thing? What are those things? Um, get another, these things here, an RIA, so get another one of those in, and then get a thermal cycler, and then get some more glassware, so some regular glassware, so really kit that out with much in the way of equipment, so maybe that'll help out quite a bit. Also, do we want to get ourselves another sample store, just in case that helps? So yeah, we'll put another one of those in over there, that could be quite useful. Don't think we can fit too much more equipment over there, but they can nip over there to use the equipment in that room. Right, so that looks good. A little bit of space over here that's not doing anything at all. And then we've got all that down there as well. Do you know what? What is that supposed to be? 
Um, it's supposed to be over here, is it? Have we even got anything going on over here? No, that's doing nothing. Um, intensive care doesn't have a cleaning closet. That's, that's outrageous. That's not good enough at all. That's ridiculous. Hang on. <laughs> Who cleans all this? Oh, dearie me. Other people must come over and clean this when they find a spare moment. That's not acceptable at all. Hang on a second. Hang on. Let's get an intensive care cleaning closet. Doesn't have to be big. Like that, please. And then possibly even a rest... Oh, no, there's a bathroom there. There's a bathroom just there. That's okay. I mean, maybe... Do we extend the ICU? Just put another bit of ICU just there. And just line up a few beds across the back. Just to see if that helps. Or do we spend our money on getting the new trauma centre in? There are so many options. And I don't know what to do. I'm not good at this kind of thing. Hang on. Do you know what we can do, though? We can get that sorted. We can get the little kind of cleaning closet done. And we can hire a new person. Because last time, we didn't hire a single person. There were no spins on the wheel of names whatsoever. So, um, you know, let's do that, shall we? Let's find a cleaning closet, wherever one might be. Uh, ah, just there. Just there. Okay, so grab the wall in there and turn it to red for this department. So we'll have the wall sorted like that. And then we'll go to the floors and we'll grab the floors and turn them red and drop the floors in. We will have a window in here because that'd be quite nice because we can have windows. So we'll get a nice window. A window with blinds. Um, yeah, like that, right in the middle. And then we need a door, of course, restricted area like that. And then we can just put some basic things in here. So, yeah, a couple of shelves like so. We'll have the... Um, yeah, the stainless steel cabinet. We'll do this trick again. Stainless steel cabinet with a sink on top of that and then nip to there and grab a mirror and put that there. Very nice. And then we'll have a hamper thing like that. Couple of bucket carts and I think that'll be okay. In fact, no, I tell a lie. I tell a complete lie. We want a bin just there in the corner and this room is big enough so we can have a lovely plant. Let's have that one in a nice red plant pot. Okay, so now we have a little cleaning cupboard thing set up for intensive care because they didn't have one before. It, it looks clean. It looks clean enough. Maybe they sort of focus on this. I don't know. I don't know what happened to the camera there either. Um, okay, right, so now we need to go and hire somebody. We need to get a cleaner on board to go and, you know, spruce things up around intensive care. So let's see. I think maybe... Just get one on the day shift, one on the night shift. That should allow us to muddle through okay. So here we go. Who do we have? Um, okay. It's not looking great, is it? Efficiency, 40% for Nancy down here. Um, Paul Clark has got a good trait, but he's not great at his job. Efficiency, 3%. Dexterity, 10%. Um, yeah, the middle two aren't great. Dana Smith here is okay. She's okay. And she's got no secrets either. So what you see is what you get with her. Do you know what? It's not that big a department. We'll have you on the day shift and then on the night shift. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Could we switch things round? Maybe Jane Foster could work. Hang on. Oh no. What's her other trait though? Um, I mean, Paul does work better at night. Maybe we just hire Paul. And then he can just improve his skills as he does lots of cleaning. Because he's very cheap, he's very affordable, and he does work better at night. Do you know what, Paul? We're going to give you a chance. We're going to give you a chance, Paul. In you come. You can prove your worth to us. Um, okay, there we go. So two people, which of course means we get to make two spins on the Wheel of Names. So courtesy of the Wheel of Names, on the day shift here in intensive care, doing some janitoring, we can welcome Maz Guardian or Mass Guardian. And then on the night shift, we welcome Scooty. So there we go. Two new people, Mass Guardian and Scooty, have joined us and they're going to do some cleaning just to make sure the intensive care looks all very lovely and tidy and spick and span and such like. Okay, so that's good. So we sorted that out. A little bit of space over there not being used. Is there anything else that looks glaringly absent? I don't think so. I think everything is sort of okay down here. There's a bit of space over there which isn't being used right now. That's the big thing that is going to cost quite a bit of money that we could possibly invest in. 
Although that room is sort of looking okay right now. And anything up here, that's all okay. I think those two rooms there. We invested in these last time to do the epidemic events and they've not really done anything. <laughs> I don't think they've even been used. We didn't use them as part of the epidemic event, I don't think. Um, what else have we got going on? Nothing much going on there. Um, we could, I suppose we could add some things over here. We could add some things over into, uh, hang on, which one's this? Into internal medicine. We could get a few things over here because it's largely empty, isn't it? It's largely empty. It's not looking good. Um, also, do you know what? That's that. This is niggling me here. Um, that bed. Can we make it red, please? Thank you so much. I mean, all the things on the wall are blue, but that's okay. Um, we can't change. Hang on. Can we change that? Can we change that bed? Does that change to blue? Oh, no, no, hang on. No, no, I don't want it to be blue. I want it to be red. Hang on. Click that. Can we make it red? Does that affect that bed? No, because again, somebody's using it. That's very fiddly. It's very fiddly. Right. Let's maybe get these wards sorted out. Get more beds along here. And that might help quite a bit. That's going to be a good use of our cash, I think. Because this department looks a little bit kind of... It's half finished. It's got many empty rooms and things. So let's do a little bit of work over here. I don't quite know why the camera keeps flying about all over the place. Right. So go to here. And we shall do this. We shall grab ourselves that. And we'll just go plop and plop. And can we get one last one in? Yes, we can. Okay, so some more beds going on in there. And then if we can do the exact same thing over here. So drop one there and then get one like that and one like that. These are a bit more expensive and one like that. And I don't think we can get one just there. We can't do that because the door is in the way, which is a bit of a nuisance. I mean, we could just move the door over, could just shuffle the door over a bit, but then where are we going to put the plants? Do you know what? That's okay for now. That'll do. That's quite a lot of beds in there. Okay, so that's good. I mean, yeah, do we get ourselves another cardiography thing? I think we already got one. Where did we get? I oh, know we haven't got cardiography up here, actually. Both the cardiography units are empty. Maybe we get one of those. Let's get ourselves a cardiography unit, shall we? Let's plop one of these down. So here we go. Exam table. This room is huge, by the way. This room is way too big for what it's going to be used for. But OK, it's fine. So we'll put that there. We'll get a red USG that can go just there. Is that valid? That oh, needs an ECG, ah, which has to go on a table at the end. <laughs> this is very fiddly. OK, glass table, then get the ECG and put that there. OK, right. So that's that sorted. Uh, we'll have the bins across that side because, of course, we will. Uh, disinfectant can go just there on the other side of the door as you come in. Uh, do we need a desk? Do we need somebody to sit at a desk? I don't think we do. I don't think we need a desk particularly in there. Okay, that's fine. Although, no, there is a PC, actually. There is a PC. I don't think somebody specifically works in here, though. Um, let's put the desk over in that corner. So as people walk in, they can see they can see the doctor over here, possibly. Um, and yeah, okay, so we'll get ourselves a computer in here and a printer. And then we need a chair so it has a nice red chair to be in front of the computer okay that's looking good and uh, then we need some equipment cabinets we sort of took those across that side we'll have the sort of hand washing stuff there and the equipment stuff here so i have one of those and another equipment cabinet like that the examination lamp can just sort of um go just there that's fine i think that's it i think that's it that is now a valid cardiography unit, although it does look a little bit empty, doesn't it? So maybe we'll get some other bits and bobs in. Um, yeah, there's there was something on here. A lab analyzer. I mean, that sounds like a handy thing to have. That sounds like the sort of thing we would need to have around here. So why don't we have ourselves a table like that? And we can put stuff on there, like the lab analyzer. Um, over here... We'll get a scrubbing sink. I know we don't necessarily need a scrubbing sink, but I like the idea of them being able to wash their hands because, you know, they're doing doctoring stuff. Right, so drop that in and then get the lab analyzer and put that there. And then we've got space next to the lab analyzer for something else. Oh, yes. Oh, we can have something, a flower. We can have a little flower, a little red flower. 
There we go. Lovely. Just, you know, spruce the room up a bit. Uh, then we need the plant, of course. Let's get... I know that one. Let's have that plant and we'll pop that there. Got a bit of room over here. A little bit of room over there. Do you know what? Let's get in another glass table. Pop that just there. Hang on, where can they get scrubs? Um, hang on, hang on. We can find them in here, can't we? Um, where are the scrub shelves? Yeah, there we go. Tall scrub shelf. Uh, let's have it in a lovely kind of purpley colour. Uh, we'll put that just there. So if they need scrubs, they can get them. And then we've got a table. We've got a table that we can put stuff on, more stuff. Um, how about we have um, some trauma tools? They could be quite handy. And a skull. Why not pop a skull on a table as well? Right, so we have a cardiography unit ready to go. That's quite good. And we've used yeah, quite a chunk of money, but I think it's a good thing to do. We've used it in a, yeah, a sort of a sensible way. I mean, ideally, I'd like to get some of those in. Oh, hang on, we've got a clock. There's not a clock. Have I been omitting putting clocks into rooms? Oh, that's very sad. How will people know what the time is? How will they know what to do? Okay, um, pop a clock onto that wall there. Phew, everything is sorted. Also, because this is about, um, this is a cardiography thing, how about a poster about your heart? That would make sense, wouldn't it? Right, there we go. With that done, we can come out of there. So that's another room sorted out. That might help out over here in internal medicine a little bit. And then I think as well, with some of our remaining money, we're quite a lot, we should get the lounge sorted because we do have a lounge over here in internal medicine, but it's not up and running yet. It's just, it's just a big old waste of time. So how about we get that sorted? So thinking what we do is, can we have a number of yeah visitor seats? Oh, hang on, no, 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 no. Red visitor seats, come on, come on. Keep with the theming, keep with the theming. So visitor seat, visit a seat and then like that and like that we can tuck one in down there so that's yet you know, five sets of visitors can come in and then over here we have all of the other stuff we have the drinks and the bookcases maybe a sofa in there um so let's get a vending machine in red pop that into that corner then we'll get a coffee and tea vending machine we'll have one of those and then we'll get a water dispenser pop that there get us a bin is the bin not here okay the bin isn't one of the default things that's a little bit silly but never mind i will put coffee table just there because we'll put the nice fruit juice on it that's quite oh, hang on there's a round coffee table hang on that looks much better can we pick up the fruit juice how do we pick up the can we put it onto the round table no it doesn't fit onto the round table okay no you're useless round table um oh no there's there's that one there hang on can it go on that one instead <laughs> This is a good use of our hard-earned money. Yes, it can. Okay, do you know what? We'll we'll get rid of that. Get rid of that and, and get rid of that. There you go. Look, we got some money back, everybody. Yay. Right, move that over. That's fine. Uh, right, a bin. We need a bin. Uh, or clock. That might be quite helpful. Pop that there. Um, yes, a bin would be useful. So grab a bin and put that into the corner like so. And then we've got a little bit of room. Do you know what? We'll put that like that look just there. And then we'll have the plant as you come in. Get a nice red pot. Although I think that table is now facing the wrong way. Like that look. And then across here, we have got the option to put a TV in. Do we want to put ourselves a little kind of cabinet and pop a TV on the top? Is that a thing we want to do? What, do you want to come here and watch TV in the lounge? Maybe you would, but you have to stand up and watch it. You have to stand up because we can't mount the TVs on the wall for some reason. Don't quite know why. Um, okay, do you know what? Let's go without a TV. Let's get some lovely literature. Let's get a bookcase just there. There we go. Right, so the lounge is up and running in case people do need it. And now we've got more beds over here. Maybe that'll become a little bit more sort of popular. And I think the final things that we should invest our money in right now are down here in internal medicine, a bathroom just there, and then a kind of staff room over there. Now, the bathroom, I think, is probably a little bit more important. I think the nearest bathroom from there is either over there in infectious diseases and you don't really want to go to that one or over here which is part of what's that part of that's part of radiology I think possibly it might be part of radiology so it's over there so it's not too far away but it's a little bit of a trek and of course if you're sat just there and you need the loo you have to walk all the way over there it'd be a lot easier 
if you could just nip over there. So I think let's get that bathroom set up at least. Let's go and do that and see what money we have left at the end of that. It doesn't take long to set up a bathroom. They're fairly straightforward. So, okay, let's just get one of these in nice and quick. There we go. Nice and simple. Nothing too exciting there. Bathroom, plants, sinks, hand dryers, all that kind of stuff. And even on the outside, I've put the little kind of decal sticker things on the wall. You can't really see it there. Can put the walls back up a second. There we go. They're going on there. Do you know what? They don't look very good actually in white on there, do they? Hang on a second. Can we change them? Can we change those to red? That might make a little bit more sense. There we go. It's worth checking. Right. So you know that that there is the bathroom. Okay. That's quite good. Um, and then do we have a similar thing for a kind of a staff room over here? Uh, a common room. Yeah, okay, let's pop that on either side of that door. And I think, do you know what, whilst we've got 124 grand burning a hole in our pocket, which we could use to pay off our loans, we're not going to, we could get this huge big common room set up over here. We could get all sorts of exciting bits and bobs in here. So I think, yeah, let's work on that as well. Again, it's not overly exciting, is it? It's not sort of a big glamorous thing. It's just going to have a few tables and chairs in, maybe a fridge and some food serving things and all that kind of stuff. So we'll just throw this together nice and quick. It's quite a big room. It's quite a big room, which is quite nice. But I think what we'll do is we'll have lots of kind of um, eating bits down here, I think. Shame we hang on, hang on. We could put that at that end, that at that end, look, and then that means there's a bit of a gap down the middle, and then do the same sort of thing there and there, and then we can get lots of chairs next to them. I mean, fancy chairs, of course, we're gonna have fancy chairs, obviously. So, this has got quite a lot of seating, and down there, that's all fine, that's okay. I'm not so bothered. So, yeah, everyone can go and sit down here and have a bite to eat. Um, that chair is completely in the wrong place. Grab a chair, pop that there. So we've got enough seating for what? Four, eight, 12, 16 people. Maths with pens. And I did that in my head, everybody. So that's quite good. That's quite good. And then I think down here, we just have kind of, you know, food stuff. So along here, we can have some stuff. Maybe in the middle, we could have some of the meal counters back to back. Um, let's put a couple of fridges in that corner so people can bring their own food and then grab it out of the fridge. Um, and then we'll have a dining table kind of up against the wall as you come in like that. And we'll have a coffee machine. Um, do we get two coffee machines? Just in case people are extra, extra desperate for coffee. It can make tea as well, everybody. Don't worry. Right. So we'll have that. Um, we'll put a clock up here, you know. In fact, put a clock down there, look. Put a clock just there. That's quite good. Um, and then, of course, we want a lovely plant and a bin. So we'll put the bin in the corner like that. And then we'll have a plant as you walk in just there as well. Very nice. Right. And then get all the other stuff in. Um, I mean, somewhere to wash your hands would not be such a bad thing. But, you know, what? we'll have a couple of lockers maybe next to the fridges, just in case you want to get something out of your locker as well, like a book or something. Um and then I feel like we should possibly have somewhere where they can wash their hands. I think, you know, I wouldn't mind that look. I don't mind that so much. So have their little kind of food thing in the middle. So they can go and grab some food. Um, we want to get ourselves, where is it? Oh, fruit juice. Fruit juice might be quite a nice thing for them to have. How about a little coffee table just there possibly. And one just there. So we could put fruit juice on that one there. Um, can we not get a, a, like a water dispenser? Oh, we can do. It's just there. Oh, botherations. Okay, hang on a second. Right. Um, get rid of that. Bye bye. Put the water dispenser in like so. Okay, so you can come in, get yourself a caffeinated drink, a water drink, a fruit drink. You can get food from there, from the food counters, and you can get your own food from the fridge if you bought your own food in. The only thing we're really lacking is a place for them to wash their hands, and I would quite like that. So what we're going to do is, I think, can we move that there? No. No, we can't. That's a bit of a nuisance. Um, okay, what we'll do is, hang on, move that out of the way for now. Just put that just there will do for the moment. It's not going to stay there. That's a silly place. Put that there, and then maybe get another water dispenser to go just there. So grab water from there and then we'll put the drink thing. Which way round is that facing? Hang on a minute. Where's the arrow? Like that. So put that just there next to the coffee and tea serving machines. And then just here, can we do the stainless steel cabinet trick with 
a kitchen sink in the top of it like that and then nip over here grab a mirror and put one on the wall just there so you can sort of freshen up a little bit if you need to i quite like that i quite like that and do you know what else we can have in here we can have windows lovely lovely windows let's put um a window there and a window there and then put one just there look let's put, let's put two oh no we can't put that there that's blocked by another object, apparently. I don't know what's blocking that. Oh, clock. The clock is on. Hang on, no, because that just looks silly now. Um, let's put the clock... Um, uh, where? There, that'll do. The clock can go just there. And then we can have another window. Okay, so that room's got some nice natural light coming into it. That's going to be very lovely. Okay, right. Very happy with that. And that leaves us with 115,700 money left to play with, which is still quite a lot of money for 1621 in the afternoon, given that we did just spend a load of money on a lot of very exciting bits and bobs. So now I think what we do is we get time ticking on until the end of the day. So we get to eight o'clock and then we get to see what money we have left after we've paid out the day shift. I mean, look, the money is pouring back in. The money is coming in because we're getting paid 120% of the insurance payments. So that's helping out a great deal. Prestige today, 110%. Mark Moore doing his best to bring Prestige down a bit. Please don't die, Mark Moore. That's wonderful. So the money is coming in very, very quickly. That's very welcome. So even though we're going to pay out a load of money very soon to the, you know, on the wages for the day shift, we're still going to have a huge pile of money remaining, which is very, very welcome. I'm happy about that. So what we do is, I think we get through to the morning. So we see how much we go down to now. So 83 grand, still quite a lot of money. And then we fly on through until the morning, straight on till morning. And then we have another go at an epidemic event. I think we get to eight o'clock, make sure the day shift are on. More people on the day shift means we can do more stuff. And we do an epidemic event because we need to complete those. We need to do three events in a row now to move on quick snaps, cares, sort of uh, you know, objectives. We're going to get 50 grand for that if we succeed. That'll be very welcome in chipping away at the bank loans. And then also it means that we then get another one over here for happy life. So we can then get, yeah, that'll be up to two epidemic events. And I suppose after that, we could do another one. We could do a third epidemic event, I guess. Um, oh, 10% more patients are coming in for two days. This is wonderful. Um, yeah, we could do two of those in a row, I suppose. We could do two epidemic events. That'll complete that objective for Happy Life if we were to select them, because we haven't picked them right now. And then that'd leave us needing one more to do quick snap cares. I think that's what we do. That sounds like a good goal. So here we go. Let's fly on until eight o'clock in the morning, get all the money from the overnight people, get the day shift in, and then we'll have another go at an epidemic event. But we'll kind of try and fly through that. Oh no, hang on a second. <laughs> Maybe we won't do that. Okay, an event has happened. Taurus returning from vacation have fallen ill while traveling home. Patients are being transported to nearby hospitals straight from the airport. Okay, so is it some sort of food poisoning or is it like gas or what i don't know okay accept and take over all the patients how many have we oh my goodness me <laughs> right okay right here we go right let's uh, let's go and not blue like them let's code blue all these people okay so everybody's been code blued a lot of people do seem to be here so lots of people are already in emergency going to chairs which is good so that means we're not wasting time on, you know, them having to arrive. They're already here, which is handy, but there are so many of them. So we're going to try and get through this pretty quickly, because if we go through every single one of these, how many people have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15 people. If we were to try to look at every single one of these people and you know, really go into detail about what we're doing with them, this video would be about nine hours long. So I think we're just going to try and fly through these as quick as we can. They're all under our control. So we're going to get all the little kind of pop-up prompt things to determine how we'd like to treat them. However, I would like to look at one of them. Okay, Peter Baker has already collapsed. Um, okay, he's dehydrated. Okay, so rehydrate put you into observation please um and i mean it could be anything you've got one of 56 possible we've got no idea what's wrong with you we haven't got the faintest idea um okay do an interview if he wakes up that'll be quite useful basic visual test oh no hang on physical exam physical exam 
And then, of course, we want to do our old friend... Oh, no, evaluation's good. We'll do that. And then if we can find where it is, differential diagnosis. Hooray! Um, okay, right. But he's going to be taken away, I imagine, somewhere else to, you know, intensive care or whatever. Um, I mean, okay. What is this? What are all these things? Many ears disease, an inner ear disorder. That's some sort of ear disorder. That's concussion. And that is non-cancerous skin growth, often caused by repeated middle ear infections. Okay, so this is to do with your head. This is something to do with your ears and your head. Uh, we'll give you recommendations for the uh, for the tinnitus. Um, and then you've only got two hidden symptoms. Physical exam and then audiometry. Because that's something to do with listening to stuff, isn't it? Um, it? Determines the patient's level of hearing. So that might help figure out if it's an ear condition or something. And an ear exam. That might be quite useful. Um, okay, so let's try and do that to all of these people. If somebody's got something particularly fascinating or particularly difficult to deal with, we'll pop back and have a look at them. But uh, yeah, if we are going to go through every single one of these and try and figure it out, yeah, this video will be very, very long indeed. So I'm just going to try and work through these as best I can and hope, fingers crossed, that we actually succeed. That's a lot of people to treat in not that much time. It's an epidemic event, however, which is kind of what we want, but it's looking like it might be quite a difficult one. But here we go, let's fly through and see how we get on. Okay, so it's seven o'clock in the morning and we've just paid out the money for the night shift, but even with that gone, we're down to $53,516, which is very good. That's very good for this time of day. In an hour's time, that's gonna fly back up. So that's looking pretty good. And in terms of our event, we've cured 46% of the patients. So we're doing okay with that. We've got, what's that? Is that 10 minutes, does that say? Yeah, 10 minutes, 45 seconds left. So we're kind of, yeah, we're plowing through this. Quite a lot of them have got poison ivy rashes. About four or five people have had that. So that's quite simple. When you work out what that is, you send them to internal medicine, they get some sort of cream or something, and then they go away eventually. So you're quite easy to sort of deal with. You're not too bad. So do you know what, actually? We're going to put you back onto computer control because we've got nothing else that we need to do with you now. You just need to get your treatments and then you can go home. So you're going to be fine. Um, who have we got left? Up to 53% now. Um, one person did have their collapse. I'm not quite sure where they are now. Can't remember who it was, but maybe they're okay now. I don't know. Um, Thomas Williams has many years disease. That is a thing to be dealt with in internal medicine. We'll do all those three things anyway. And you can have some diuretics. There you go. So we've just been kind of doing that. We've been doing that. Oh, there you go. Look, you can go home. So you can clear off home. That's really good. That's another person off our list down there. Sarah Brown, you can go home. Another person off the list. Paul Moore. Ah, you've got many years disease. Um, right, we'll send you over to internal medicine, because that's where the other person went. Do all of those things, please, and we'll give you all of that kind of stuff as well. Wonderful. So, I mean, look, it's just been this. It's been doing this pretty much through the entire of the night shift. Bacterial gastroenteritis. It sounds thoroughly unpleasant. Nobody likes that. However, you've got a flashy on and off hidden symptom. So let's make sure that we actually do get that sorted. That is general surgery. Okay, so we'll also do an interview there, please. Right, okay, so you head off to there. So yeah, 53% with nine, what is that, nine minutes, 40 seconds, but gone past eight o'clock. The money is ticking back up, which is wonderful. Mary's got campy back to think, but you can go home. You can go home now. You're treated. So you don't need to hang around anymore. I think you're done. So you can go home. That's fine. Less people under our control down here means less screens popping up telling us to do lots of stuff. So that's quite good. Um, okay. We're not quite sure what's what's wrong with you here, Paul Johnson. Maybe microbial sampling might help out quite a bit. Also, can you go into observation? Do we need to put you in there? Maybe not right now. But okay, so we'll keep chipping away at this. We'll keep going. Another poison ivy rash. Another one of those. Um, yeah, that again is internal medicine. Um, and they'll sort you out. So you'll be done soon, which is quite good. So that's another one complete. So that'll tick up as soon as they get their lovely kind of creams or whatever it is. Their steroid creams. Up to 66% now. This is wonderful. You can go home. Another poison ivy rash person. Okay. So we're just going to keep chipping away at this until this particular event is done. We're down to three people under our control now. This is wonderful. Peter Baker, yes, you've got that thing. So you have all of these, please. Have all of those treatments. 
That's wonderful. One hidden symptom, but it's not a flashy on and off wibbly hidden symptom. So it's sort of okay. It's probably not ideal that we're not treating it. In fact, hang on, Paul Johnson, you're the only person left. We've got quite a long time just to deal with you. Um, Frank, you can go home. That's absolutely fine. Go and pick up your stuff from the pharmacy and you can go away. Um, so yeah, it's just, no, it's not you, is it? It's, um, hang on, it's Paul Johnson. It's just you. We're not quite sure what you've got there. Um, okay, please, please don't be one of these ones that just drags on again. Okay, blood draw, we'll do that. Elisa sampling. Okay, I don't know if that's going to be any use at all. Hang on, hang on. What if we click that thing there? Does this help us at all in any way? <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, they're the symptoms, but he's got all of those. Um, stool analysis we've kind of done. Physical examination we've done. Uh, physical exam we've done, temperature measurement we've done. Yeah, El ELISA. ELISA testing might be quite useful. I don't know what it is, but we're going to do it anyway. And hopefully they can do it nice and quick. Because and yeah, I know it says 5 minutes 40 seconds, but that will come down quite quick. Oh no, and it's Penge Cupboard doing all of this stuff. <laughs> oh dear. Um, okay, you're okay. You're okay. We'll return control of you back to the computer because I think you're fine. It's this one person here that we now need to get sorted out nice and quick. Um, Lisa White, I don't think it's part of our event thing, so they'll sort that out. It's okay. Lisa White, you're in good hands. We deal with lots of collapsy people all the time. So uh, yeah, if we could just figure this out. But I mean, already, look, down to four minutes ten. I don't want another one of these situations where we have to guess, because that would be rubbish. <laughs> okay, come on. Come on, which one of these is it? Which one of these? Come on, Pete Miller. Yeah, it's fine, Pete Miller. You're okay. Okay, Pete Miller isn't okay. Pete Miller's quite dead. <laughs> oh, Pete Miller, away to autopsy with you. I'm sorry, Pete Miller. I'm sorry, Pete Miller. I said you were okay, and you are clearly not okay. Demonstrably so. Lisa White, what's going on here? What is happening with you? Hypervolemic shock. Uh, you're being treated for all these things anyway. Um, can we figure out what's wrong with you? Do all of the things. Try and figure out what's wrong with her, please. And um, it's just you. Paul Johnson. If we don't figure out what is wrong with you, I'm going to be very, very annoyed because we're down to one person again. Are we going to have to guess <laughs> like we did before? Are we just going to have to take a random guess? Um, okay. Yep, you've arrived at pathology. That's fine. We're doing the autopsy. It's okay. Come on, Paul Johnson. Come on. Just, just pick one of the... Which one would you like? Um, okay, you've had your blood test. That didn't help either. 1 minute 39. What about this ELISA testing thing? The haematology lab. You're going to the lab. You're going to a chair. You're fulfilling your needs. We're going to have to pick one of these at random again, aren't we? Because we can't fail this entire massive big event that we've just been on. On one person who just... <laughs> we can't figure out which one of these it is. But that's general surgery. And that is infectious diseases. So, I mean, we, I don't know which one we do. Which one do we pick? I jet open the symptoms table. I don't I don't know. <laughs> which one is it? I don't know. I mean, the symptoms, we've got the same amount of symptoms on each one. There's one hidden symptom, which I imagine would tell us what it is, but I don't think we've got time to figure out which hidden symptom it is. So, here we go. It's a 50-50 chance. Which one do we pick for Paul Johnson? Has he got Campylobacteriosis? Okay, so that's, yeah, food boiling on us. That's like a stomach upset. Well, has he got C. difficile infection? Clostridium difficile infection is caused by toxin-producing bacteria. It can be fatal. Hang on. His hidden symptom isn't wibbling up and down. So I would expect if there's a potentially fatal thing, it's possibly that one there. Because, yeah, if he's got that, it can be fatal. I would imagine that will be a wibbly symptom. It'll be wibbling up and down, going, oh, look out, danger, danger, Will Robinson. Whereas that one is not quite so dangerous. But then again, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Have we got time to get this Elisa testing thing done? And also, we've got $172,000. That's quite nice. Let's not, you know, lose a load of reputation and stuff on failing this one particular thing. Paul Johnson, what have you got? Do you know what? We're going to do what we did last time. We're going to pick the first one. I think that one makes a bit more sense. Because, yeah, I think... If that thing is potentially fatal, I think that hidden symptom would be wibbly. And it's not wibbly, so we're going to go with that, and we're going to give you antibiotics. 
please accept them. You've got 59 seconds to do so <laughs> and hope that this is the right one. So where are you? We can see what you're doing. Please accept the antibiotics really urgently. You're on a code blue. So hopefully you can get seen to very quickly. You're going into a doctor. You're going into Dr. Blossom Herd. Dr. Herd is ready to see you now. And here we go. Oh, we've done it. <laughs> it might not be the right thing, but possibly we've just fluked that again. Okay. Good grief. Okay, another 20,000 money. And we've completed six events in a row successfully now. Hooray for us. Uh, right, do you know what? Uh, whatever. I'm not bothered anymore. Paul, you've caused me undue stress. I thought that was all going to go horribly wrong. So there we go. We've now completed one event in a row, according to that. Although we have completed six in a row overall, but that only started just now. So that's a bit unfortunate. And then we've now done two epidemic events. So if we do another one, that will complete the happy life objective, which means they're going to send 15 people our way, which means possibly... We'll see what the next objective is after that, but we could drop, say, cheapo care and maybe start moving toward happy life. Because 15 people paying 130% of their sort of you know, treatment monies might be better than 27 people plus three flashy lights, needle machines people paying 100%. I'm, I'm not entirely sure of the numbers on that, but I kind of feel like we need to move away from them and toward the sort of slightly higher paying insurance people. But. We're almost at 200 grand. <laughs> the amount of money is just ludicrous. It's silly money right now. This is wonderful. We've not had that much money for ages. Do you know what? I know it's not exciting. I know it's not exciting at all. And it's very ungeek company because normally with a big pile of money, I'd think, brilliant, let's go and buy a load of plants or something. But we're going to do something very boring and financially sensible. We're going to pay off another 20 grand of our bank loan. So now it's down to 160,000. I mean, in theory, we could pay it off. We could pay it off, but then we wouldn't have money for extra fun bits of Bob. So I think, yeah, 176,000 monies is pretty good. And with that done, I think we'll finish up for now. I mean, um, yeah, that took, that took a lot longer than I thought. That last event was quite complicated and lots and lots and lots of things happened that you didn't see on camera. So it's taken quite a long time, but, uh, but yeah. I think things are looking pretty good. I think now we can handle the events, get another epidemic event done next time. That'll complete one of the goals for happy life, then complete another event. And then we complete that goal there for quick snap care. Who knows what their one is after that. And then we'll just sort of keep on going. We do need to build ourselves a cardiology unit and a neurology unit as well. But you know what? We'll get there in time, I'm fairly sure. Right now, let's just enjoy the fact that we've got a big pile of money and we've succeeded in completing some events, which is wonderful. But yes, with that done, I think we'll wrap things up for now and then come back next time to see what shenanigans we can get up to. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Project Hospital. But for now, thank you very much much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I will see you next time. Kunik, your time is now and you have missed Kunik. <laughs> this is this is unacceptable, Kunik. An Ashes caravan has been ambushed by man-hunting chinchillas. <laughs> Are you going to land on my potatoes? <laughs> that is just not the done thing. Oh, there's a lot of them. One, two, three. These guys have got amazing hair. I'm delighted that we've actually done something and it's worked. 